Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Take Out Info. I'm Scotty, my co-host Cletus. <clears throat> and today I'm going to do a quick little video on something that uh, has come up uh, many times actually. Uh, what happens when you get, say, you get a new computer or more likely you get, say, a new computer but you have a different monitor or maybe you get a different monitor um, or maybe you want to add a second monitor to your laptop or your desktop computer and you have to connect the screen to the pewter and there are different cable types and again and again I've seen people kind of being very confused about what type of cable to use and uh, of course most people don't know that certain connectors can actually work together even though it's two different connectors you can actually use uh, uh, essentially an adapter cable uh, to connect the two so this is just a quick little overview of different types of cables that you can use to connect computers to monitors and uh, right, so here we go. Alright, so here we have lots of stuff. Um, this is an old and busted graphics card and I brought this because hopefully we can kind of zoom in here and we can see. Alright, so this is uh, an example of the different types of ports that you may have on the back of your computer or possibly on the, the side or the back of your laptop. Uh, these two are DVI ports, which is a uh, digital visual interface, but just DVI, that's all you have to remember. Um, this is an HDMI port, which stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface, and this is DisplayPort. Okay, so, what the heck? Right. So your first basic cable is uh, VG, a VGA cable or uh, video graphics array and your your basic VGA cable is let me take this little adapter off here so you can see that's your basic VGA cable there are 15 pins and this is basically just a um, for some of these pins you have like red green blue and like horizontal sync and vertical sync this is an analog cable and you can do resolutions, uh, it's an analog connection, you can do resolutions up to 2048 by 1536 pixels. Uh, recall that Full HD or Blu-ray resolution is 1920 by 1080. So even if you have a Full HD screen, uh, 1920 by 1080, you can still use one of these analog cables. Uh, and the other benefit of these is that this one is obviously not very long, but uh, with proper, a properly shielded cable, you can have a very, very, very long analog cable. Uh, now, the problem with these, as we noticed on this relatively modern and dead graphics card, is that you don't see that plug anywhere on here, do you? That's because these are starting to disappear. Uh, but it turns out that this, there's two types of DVI connectors. One of them is a DVI-I. And you notice here, you can see those four little pins those are actually the analog signals. So if you see a port like this, a DVI port, and if it's actually labeled DVI-I, but especially if it has these four pins, you notice this one doesn't. This is a DVI-D. It's just, um, it's actually a, D a DVI uh, dual link, digital only connector. And you notice there's a blade there, but these little four pins are missing. So you got these little four holes here. What you do is you take one of these, which is DVI on one side and VGA on the other, and you just stick the puppy in there. Dunk, you stick your adapter in there, and poof, you have your your VGA output. But again, the only way you can do that is the only way you can connect one of these analog ones to a DVI port is if it has this this little cross and these especially these four little pins there. So um, right, that's DVI-I. So let's talk a little bit about DVI. Um, there are actually uh, several types of DVI connectors. As I just said, there's DVI-I, which is basically digital and these and analog. Then there's DVI-D, which is digital only, and there's lots and lots of pins. And then you may notice this one, some of the pins are actually missing, right? Uh, that's because this is, a, 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 I believe this is a single link. So there's DVI single link and DVI dual link. If you have something like this, all these little digital pins here, some of them are missing. So in this case, 
For a DVI-D single link, you could do 1920 by 1200 pixels, which would give you full HD. But if you have a super high-res screen, you would need a DVI dual link like this with all these extra pins, and that would give you 2560 by 1600 pixels. Yeah, this gets all kind of hairy, but basically, <laughs> the the key point is is like for for analog, these are starting to disappear. You you won't see these on the back of your graphics card, so you're gonna have to, if you have a DVI I with these analog pins, you can use this adapter, stick it on there, and you've got your you've got your analog connector. Um, in many modern graphics cards, they're not even doing DVI I anymore, so you don't get an analog connection anymore. Uh, in fact, most of the modern ones that I've seen, uh, there's no more, there's no more analog at all on many of them. So, um, the, um, yeah, the benefit of, of DVI obviously is that it's digital. So it's actually sending, you know, there's no, with an analog cable, uh, you're actually, well, it's analog. You're sending, uh, kind of like old fashioned, you know, uh, you can think of it like, you know, old fashioned TV signals or something. And with DVI, it's it's all digital, so you have uh, instead of the graphics card converting the the digital picture into analog signals, and then your monitor converting those analog signals back into digital pixels to display on the screen, uh, you get just basically digital passed straight through to the screen and higher quality. Blah blah blah. So um, right. Next up is HDMI. That is an HDMI plug. And this, where did it go? Yes, this is your basic HDMI cable. And you notice the plugs look like that. They're kind of trapezoidal and they've got lots of little pins inside. These uh, HDMI cables are used for darn near everything these days, especially for um, uh, like home theater systems and stuff, like hooking your TV to your Blu-ray player or whatever. Um, this guy is pretty much the, the cable of choice. Uh, it's also increasingly popular, as we saw in here. Increasingly, they're putting HDMI ports on graphics cards because it's a kind of a... It's a well, it's a nice standard, and it's, it's kind of become like the universal connect your screen to your other gizmo uh, cable. Um, so with HDMI, you're pretty much guaranteed to be safe unless you have an older computer monitor that does not have an HDMI uh, socket on the back, and that's one of the things obviously you have to check. So, um, the uh, right HDMI is actually backwards compatible with DVI-D. So, let me dig that one up. Right here it is. Okay, so if you have a graphics card that has this, whoops, there we go, DVI-D, you can buy a cable. And, and if your monitor has an HDMI input, you can buy a cable like this, which is, on this side, DVI-D, and on this side, HDMI. Well, how does that work? Well, it turns out that um, H the HDMI standard has support for DVI-D single link signaling. So recall that if you're using an adapter cable like this to go from DVI on your graphics card to HDMI on your monitor, or actually vice versa even, uh, then it will work except only up to 1920 by 1200 resolution because it's DVI, the single link. Isn't this fun? It's really complicated. <laughs> um, right, uh, HDMI cables, they also support all kinds of other stuff, and part of the reason they're used for, for uh, like home theater systems and stuff is because um, they also support, uh, well, there's been, there's been several revisions, but HDMI cables also support the transmission of audio and Ethernet. Um, they support CEC, or Consumer Electronics Control, which is basically a separate data channel that runs over the cable, and it allows you to uh, do stuff like when you turn your, your TV on, your Blu-ray player will automatically turn on or off, you know. Um, you can also use like one remote, like you can use your television remote and if your Blu-ray player and your TV and your other devices are all connected with HDMI cables and if they all support CEC, you can use one television remote and you can control everything. You can control your TV, you can control your Blu-ray player, you can control, you know, blah blah blah. So HDMI is kind of um, uh, a rather, uh, kind of a universal cable for data and, and 
uh, video and you know, now audio and even Ethernet and um, it's kind of become sort of the, the universal go-to cable for stuff, both home theater and computer stuff. Um, blah blah blah. If you're gonna buy an HDMI cable, uh, go find one that is preferably HDMI version 2.0 or higher. If you get version 1.4, uh, it's like 1.4 I think it's just HDMI 1.4. It supports 4K screen resolutions and 3D uh, Blu-ray. Um, for a computer, that doesn't really matter. But basically, when you're getting an HDMI cable, just pick the one that has the highest the highest rating. If you see like a one, you know, somebody selling a 1.4, and you see a HDMI 2.0, buy the HDMI 2.0 because they're all backwards compatible. But um, HDMI 2.0 supports other stuff like 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, uh, more color spaces, audio channels, video channels, improved 3D capability, blah blah blah. They keep adding more and more stuff to these to these HDMI cables and with each revision um, it, it does more and more stuff so um, I would say if you can just use HDMI if if your computer and your monitor support it you know if you got one of these dudes on there just get an HDMI cable and plug it in because then you're you're pretty much safe when you start futzing around with these and everything, uh, it gets a little hairy. Uh, anyway, our final one, most popular one anyway, is this guy, which is DisplayPort. And you notice he's not really like a, like a, not a, not a trapezoid, but a, what do you call it? Instead of that shape, it's this shape. <laughs> it's got a little right angle in, in, in this corner. So um, that's DisplayPort. And DisplayPort is... This guy, there you have your DisplayPort cable, right? All right, you can see if we can center that. There you go. Focusing. Good job. So that's a DisplayPort connector. Um, right, so DisplayPort is uh, its a little bit different than HDMI. It, it uh, uses packet uses packets instead of a clocked signaling scheme. So um, it's a display port is kind of like, a, it's almost like an ethernet connection where you have like twisted pairs and you're sending packets of data over it. So um, it's, it's, it's very flexible. And uh, it uh, also supports uh, VGA audio, USB, Thunderbolt, blah, 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 4K and beyond, yada, yada, yada. Um, one of the benefits is that with DisplayPort, because there's this kind of packetized data scheme for for sending your audio, video, whatever data between your gizmos, um, because of that, a single connection can be a single DisplayPort connection, say on your graphics card, can be sent to multiple devices either via a hub or uh, with like daisy chaining devices together, and it's it's almost like DisplayPort. You can form your own little like audio video component network. And it will work. HDMI is basically just kind of point to point, and that's it. Um, in that sense, DisplayPort is kind of nifty. Uh, it does not support the CEC, the Consumer Electronics Control, where you can turn your, you know, you turn your, uh, turn the TV on, and the Blu-ray player turns on automatically. Blah blah blah. Um, there's all kinds of other, other stuff. Um, it's basically DisplayPort is is more or less equivalent to HDMI. It's better in some ways. It's worse in others. Um, there's also a cable like this. Uh, this guy here is actually a mini DisplayPort connector, and on the other end of the cable you have HDMI. Um, that is uh, that only works if your DisplayPort is a dual mode, <coughs> a dual mode DisplayPort, which is a special kind of DisplayPort that can also emit an HDMI slash DVI signal via a passive adapter or cable. Um, that may not be the case with all mini DisplayPort and normal size DisplayPort connectors. It depends on it depends on your device, because basically that would mean that this guy, your DisplayPort connector on your graphics card, he would have to be this this so-called uh, dual mode DisplayPort. And the reason for that is that um, HDMI uh, you have to pay royalties and such. Uh, with DisplayPort, you don't. Well, technically, you have to, the Visa, the Video Electronic Standards Association, you have to actually pay them at least $5,000 before you get access to the specs for the DisplayPort standard. 
but with uh, HDMI, it's basically a royalty thing. So you have to pay, you know, 20 cents per whatever gizmo you make or whatever. Um, yeah, so not all display ports will work with a display port to HDMI cable. Um, right. That's pretty confusing. Um, the take-home thing is basically like you just look at your your at your your graphics card and your or your laptop connection or whatever and your and your cable and you you get the cable that has both ends. Um, just be aware that if you need an analog connection, you need one of these one of these special DVI connectors with the four pins, and you need an adapter. Um, there are also adapters for like you know. Display port to active adapters. It's like a, it's instead of just a passive one like this, there's actually electronics inside, blah, blah, blah. You can get one of those. Um, but yeah, the, the, the long and the short of it is um, try to use DVI. Um, if it's there, most likely it will be. You can use DVI to HDMI or HDMI to DVI with this funky special cable here. Keep that in mind. Um, if possible, just use an HDMI cable, because it's going to make everything simple. And if possible, get an HDMI 2.0 or higher cable and hook it all together. So, right, hopefully your head didn't explode, because uh, you'd think that just connecting a screen to a computer would be a simple affair, but no, it's not. So, right. If you have any questions or comments, leave them uh, in the section below, thingy, whatever. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.